So, good morning again, guys. So, our topic for today is all about shear and moment in beams. So, the basic problem in strength of materials is to determine the relations between the stresses and deformations caused by load supplied to any structure. In axial or torsional loadings, we had little trouble in applying the stress and deformation relations because in the major majority of cases, the loading either remains constant over the entire structure or is distributed in definite amounts to the component parts. The study of bending loads, however, is complicated by the fact that the loading effects vary from section to section of the beam. So, these loading effects take the form of a shearing force and a bending moment, sometimes referred to as shear and moment. So, first, to define uh, a beam, a beam is a bar subject to forces or couples that lie in a plane containing the longitudinal section of the bar. According to determinacy, a beam may be determinate or indeterminate. So here are the examples of a beam. So at the left side, so you can see the radiative force concrete beam, and at the right side is the e-stress concrete beam. Then for the steel, so here is the example of a white plan, white flange, which is a, a beam and a wood beam. For the statically indeterminate beams. Statically indeterminate beams are those beams in which the reactions of the supports may be determined by the use of the equations of static equilibrium. So we have three mo three uh, equations for equilibrium. So first is the summation of forces along x equals zero, and summation of forces along y equals zero, and summation of moment equals to zero. The beams shown below are examples of statically determinate beams. So for the first uh, image, so we have the cantilever beam. A cantilever is a rigid structural element which extends horizontally and is supported at only one end. So as, as you can see, so its uh, other end is supported and the other is not supported. Then for the simple beam, a simply supported beam or simple beam is a type of beam that has pinned support at one end and a roller support at the other end. Then next, for the overhanging beam, it is defined as a beam that has its one or both ends stretching out past its support. It can have any number of supports. In other words, it is a beam when a cantilever portion is hanging out of a simply supported beam. So it's like a mix of a simple beam and cantilever beam. So here are the examples of a cantilever beam. So in the left side, so you can we can use it as a stairs, then at the right side as a support for the canopy. Then for the simply supported beam, so it may be assumed in the ridges. Then for the overhanging beam, so this is the example of a structure with an overhanging beam. Then next, statistically indeterminate beam. If the number of reactions exerted upon a beam exceeds the number of equations in static equilibrium, the beam is said to be st statistically, statically indeterminate. In order to solve the reactions of the beam, the static equations must be supplemented by equations based upon the elastic deformations of the beam. The degree of indeterminacy is taken as the difference between the number of reactions to the number of equations in static equilibrium that can be applied. In the case of the prop beam shown, so here is the example of a prop beam, there are three reactions. So these are the R1 and R2. Then next, and M, which is the moment. So here is the moment. And only two equations. So those two equations is summation of moment along Summation of moment equals zero, and summation of forces along vertical equals zero. Can be applied, thus the beam is indeterminate to the first degree. So we have uh, three reactions, which is R1 and R2 and M, and we have only two equations. So 3 minus 2, so it means it is indeterminate to the first degree. So yeah. Then next, so here is the examples of statis, statically indeterminate beams, prop beam, 
then fixed or restrained beam, and last is a continuous beam. So here is the example of a prop beam in real life application, then restrained beams, and last for the continuous beams. So for the types of loadings, loads applied to the beam may consist of a concentrated load applied at a point, then uniform load, then uniform varying load or an applied couple or moment. These loads are shown in the following figure. So for concentrated loads, here is the example of a concentrated load. Then for the uniform load, then for the uniform varying load, and last is for the applied couple. Then next, so the different types of load in real life application. So first is the dead loads. Dead loads are a constant load in a structure such as bridge, building, or machine that is due to the weight of the members. So the supported structure and permanent attachments or accessories. So yeah. Then next for the live load. For the live load, the weight of people or goods in a building or a vehicle. Then for the wind load. Wind load is the load in pounds per square foot or neutron per square meters placed on the exterior of a structure by wind. The angle at which the wind strikes the structure, so the shape of the structure is in height, width, and etc. Then for the seismic load, seismic loading is one of the basic concepts of earthquake engineering which means application of an earthquake generated agitation to a structure it happens at contact surfaces of a structure either within the ground or with the adjacent structures or with gravity waves from tsunami so, yeah. then for the snow load so the live load due to the weight of snow on a roof so it is also included in the design calculations but it is based on the countries or be based on different countries and the other loads are the rain loads, then loads due to fluids, then loads due to lateral pressure, and last is the funding load. So for the dead loads, so the example of dead loads is the self-weight of the structure. So it is in permanent condition or hindi na siya nagagalaw. So the examples of those are the column, the strap, and the beam. Then for the live loads, so examples of the live loads are the furnitures, the vehicles, then the appliances, the gadgets, and siyempre is, and siyempre yung people. So lahat yan is gumagalaw or hindi siya na-affix sa isang place. Then next, so example of wind load, siyempre is the wind. Then for the earthquake load, so it is the earthquake itself. Then snow load is for the snow. Then ponding load. So ponding load usually uh, a load caused by the water. Then concentrated load. So here is the example of a concentrated load in real life application. So usually it is a uh, person. Then for the uniform load. So example of a uniform load is the weight of the concrete hollow blocks so, yeah. or a wall then uniform varying load so here is the example of a uniform varying load into a uh, structure which is a truss then for the applied couple so here is the example of um, applied couple so next for the shear and moment diagrams so consider a simple beam shown of length L that carries a uniform load of W. So we have a uniform load W and the length of the object or the material. Throughout its length and is held in equilibrium by reactions R1 and R2. Assume that the beam is cut at point C. So here is the point C at a distance x from the left support and the portion of the beam to the right of C be removed. So, separating the free body diagram from A to C, the portion removed must then be replaced by vertical shearing force 
V together with a couple of moment to hold the left portion of the bar in equilibrium under the action of R1 and W times X. So, it means, nagamit lang tayo ng uh, three equilibriums of equation, which is the summation of forces X equals 0, then summation of vert force vertical equals 0, and summation of moment equals to 0 para maging equilibrium ng ating material. The couple M is called the resisting moment or moment and the force V is called the resisting shear or shear. The sign of V and M are taken to be positive if they have the senses indicated above. So, M for moment and V for shear. So, for problem number one, so draw the shear and moment diagram of the beam shown. 